Hi guys, it's Ms. Fleitez. We have another Holocaust lecture for you guys. Um, make sure you're following along in your guided notes. Today we're going to talk about the different camps. Okay, so there's a difference between a concentration camp and an extermination camp. I think everybody thinks when you think of concentration camp, that was also an extermination camp, and there were two different things, okay? So where we ended off on the last video was that the Jews were sent to the ghettos, they were taken out and put in this new neighborhood with those apartment buildings, it wasn't working out, so they came up with this final solution, okay? And this final solution was sending them to these camps, okay? The final solution would end the deaths of over 6 million Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, and people with handicaps. We talked about in the previous um, lecture that, yes, it was majority Jewish people, but it really were there were other types of people that were there that Hitler just decided weren't the premium race or premium type of people. Concentration camps were also called labor camps. So yes, people were killed at concentration camps, but the purpose wasn't exact extermination. They did not have gas chambers at the concentration camps, okay? At the concentration camps or labor camps, um, Jews were used for work, labor, and also medical experiments. Dr. Joseph Mengele, we talked about him in our first um, introduction slide, he carried out experiments on Jewish people at Auschwitz. So any medical experiment, um, like things on twins or um, changing eye colors or seeing if you can reverse any diseases, they were basically using Jews as lab rats. And um, our next um, assignment is going to be survivor stories. And some of those survivor stories um, actually were experimented on by this doctor. Thousands have died from disease, overwork, starvation, or mass shootings or killings. So again, the concentration camps or labor camps did not have gas chambers. It was forced work. While they were working, yeah, they would randomly kill them if they weren't doing a good job, they got too old, that kind of thing. But thousands of people also died just from being overworked. They're not feeding them enough. You're going to see in these pictures how skinny and anorexic and malnourished they were. Or just from disease, you know, they're basically living on top of each other, treating them like rats and living with so many people, there's going to be a lot of disease that goes around, right? By 1942, SS commander has experimented with different methods and gas chambers proved to be his favorite. So concentration camps were happening for a little bit and then they realized, okay, you know, we're working them, we're having these mass shootings, we're killing them, we're working them until they die, like this is great, everything's working out, but I think we really need a next level, a next step. And that's when the gas chambers were invented and that's when extermination camps started opening up. So there were only seven official extermination camps, also known as death camps. And the very last slide, um, I'm going to show a map of Western Europe, and it's going to show you how many concentration camps there were and how many extermination camps and where they were located. These extermination camps only had one purpose and was to kill Jews. So at extermination camps, they were not used for work. That's what the concentration camp or the labor camp was used for. Gas chambers were only at the extermination camps and not the concentration camps, like I said in the last slide. Jews that were too old, too weak, or not good for work anymore were shipped from the concentration camp to the extermination camp. So they were constantly taking more and more Jews into these concentration camps. They would raid a town in Poland and bring them to the concentration camps. They would work them until they're weak and they're not strong anymore. You could have been a young, healthy man, but if you're not getting fed and you're working yourself to death and they realize that they can't use your work anymore, then they're going to ship you off to the extermination camp. Okay, you were just too old, you weren't strong enough, you weren't getting the work done, you were sent to the extermination camp. Now, Jews were moved around a lot. So they were also moved around from one concentration camp to another concentration camp. If one concentration camp would uh, become too populated, they would put them on a train, literally pack them in like animals, like they couldn't even breathe. They were packed in so tightly in these trains and shipped them off to another concentration camp. So if you were a Jewish person, you didn't know if you were being shipped to another concentration camp or if you were being shipped to an extermination camp and you wouldn't know until you get there and you see what's around. So you can literally be on the cart 
not knowing where you're going because there was so much movement around. If you got shipped somewhere, it didn't automatically mean it was an extermination camp. Okay, so identification in camps. A practice was established to tattoo the immediate identification numbers on the skin. So as you see in this picture, that's how they kept track. Initially in Auschwitz, and we're going to talk about the different camps, Auschwitz really being one of the most famous, biggest camp, right? You've probably heard of that before. Um, the camp numbers were sewn onto the clothes originally, but then they realized that that really wasn't um, very efficient. With the increased death rate, it became difficult to identify the corpses um, since clothes were removed from the corpses. So usually before they killed someone, they would have them remove their clothes and then kill them. So to identify them, they would give them a tattoo on their arm. And like I said, you know, this is the 1940s. It's not that long ago. Like we definitely had grandparents, great uncles, great grand, great, um, great grandparents maybe that were alive during this time. And I remember I had a friend that lived in my neighborhood and she was Jewish and her grandparents were in the Holocaust and they had the tattoos on their arms. And I remember them showing me, you know, they were like 80 years old, but they still had the tattoo on their arm. And that's something that like we still have people that lived in that time today. It's just crazy to think about. Okay, so modes of killing. By late 1941, the first Jews were gathered and moved, along with many other minorities, um, to concentration camps. So being moved from the ghettos into the concentration camps. And these camps were located all throughout Poland, ma mainly Czechoslovakia, Lithuania, Latvia, Ukraine, and Western Russia. Um, they were first used as slaves, right, forced labor, and then later murdered if they could not um, produce enough work anymore or if just the population got too high in the camps, okay? Okay, so some of the pictures um, that we're going to go through next um, might be a little disturbing or might be a little scary. Um, you could just go through it quickly, but I think in your guided notes I um, asked you which of the pictures um, made the biggest impact on you and why. Okay, so this picture, um, shooting women who remained alive. So basically they would just like take them out to into a field um, without any clothes on um, and just have them stand up and then randomly shoot people. And then if they were still alive, they would just shoot them. This could just be an overpopulation problem in the camp or just the fact that they thought the women couldn't do the work kind of thing. Um, executing a man kneeling before um, a mass grave. So basically they would have them dig their own graves and then they would just shoot them so that they would fall into the grave. Um, we have a picture of some forced labor and then at the bottom digging their own graves before execution. Here's another picture um, of them awaiting execution, just having them lined up and then the Nazi soldiers would just shoot random people at random times and you wouldn't know if you would get shot or not or if they would keep you for the next day to work. This is another mass execution. As you can see, they would dig their grave and you, they would just kneel and then shoot them and then they would fall right into the grave. Um, this is a mass grave of people that they shot. And this is a real picture. Um, we see some children at Auschwitz. We see the barracks at Auschwitz. So that's where they would stay. Um, as you can see, very dirty, very on top of each other, close together. And this is really a lot of disease would spread. So even if you survived a mass shooting and they didn't shoot you or you survived whatever it was, a lot of people still died from the disease of just living in the barracks alone. Um, the picture at the bottom, we have bags of human hair cut from the prisoners, um, especially when we get to like the gas chambers, they would usually just like shave or cut their head because it would be easy, easier to get rid of with the dead bodies and the way that it would burn. This is registration for new prisoners. So like I said, um, they would move throughout the camps a lot, either for work, oh, we need stronger people at this camp because we have this type of lab labor, or just registration at an execution uh, camp, right? Prisoners walking by a pile of shoes taken from murdered Jews. So once you would get there and if you were gonna be exterminated in the gas chambers because you were at um, an extermination camp, they would take all your clothes. So this big pile right here is just all shoes. So imagine you're a Jew, you're taken to this camp, you're being registered, you're getting your identi identification number and you just see this pile of shoes of all these people that died before you got there. 
Um, these are prisoners in the barracks. I wasn't kidding when I was saying that they're really just on top of each other and they were just really treated like animals and also just notice how skinny they are. So these were, you know, young, healthy men before, but one, they're not being fed and then they're just being worked to death. So even if you survived being shot or whatever, a lot of people died from disease, malnutrition, starvation, all those things. Um, these are uh, rings that were taken from prisoners in the top picture. So before they were executed, um, really more so at um, extermination camps, they would take their clothes, take their rings, take their jewelry. You know, these are mainly like wedding rings that they had um, and then piles of clothes before they were executed because when they were brought into the gas chamber, they were completely naked and they would shove hundreds of them in this chamber at once. Now the chambers also kind of looked like the showers. So a lot of people when they went into the gas chamber, they weren't sure, is it because they're giving us a shower or is it because it's a gas chamber? And they would literally just wait in this chamber to see what's gonna come out of the sprinkler. Is it gonna be gas or is it gonna be a wa like water and we're gonna take a shower? Okay, so these are what the gas chambers looked like. And remember, this wasn't at the concentration camps, only at the extermination camps. And I'm going to show you those in a second. Um, so one picture, that's what it looked like from the outside. Um, another picture, that's what it looked like from the inside. There are some flowers in there um, because it's a memorial now that you can go and visit. Um, I think the most disturbing part is the picture in the top right corner. Um, and you can see there are people's handprints on the walls, kind of like clawing to get out as the gas chamber was going off. Human bones inside crematorium ovens. So after being murdered in the gas chamber, the bodies were collected and then often burned instead of being buried because they thought it was more efficient. So they would take the bodies from the gas chambers and then cremate them. Um, in the top, um, prisoners being uh, or placing bodies into crematoriums. So these are other Jewish people that their job in the forced um, in the labor part of the extermination camp was to take the dead bodies and cremate them. And these are they're they're being forced to do this to other Jews that have died, and this could have been somebody that they've known, right? Okay, so next I'm going to talk about a couple um, important and famous um, camps. So the first one we're going to talk about is Dachau. So Dachau was the very first of the Nazi concentration camps, and that's why we're talking about this one. Um, it opened in 1933, and it was intended to hold political prisoners. Because 1933, you know, we're still in the process of... Um, you know, creating the Nuremberg laws and then transitioning into the ghettos. So the whole extermination concentration camp wasn't really an intention yet. It was really the beginning of the war is 1933 and it was intended to hold political prisoners, right? Um, afterwards, after, um, you know, the final solution became a thing, Hitler decided that its purpose was going to include forced, labors, uh, forced labor of Jews that they captured, right? The Dachau camp system grew to include nearly 100 sub camps, so it was really big and it had a lot of camps around it. The camps were liberated by U.S. forces on um, April 29th, 1945, and there were 31,951 reported killings. So a lot of these camps they're either gonna be liberated by the United States forces coming from the West or the Soviet Union forces coming from the East, depending on its location, right? And we're gonna look at a map in a second. Okay, the next camp um, is Kelmno. Kelmno is the first Nazi extermination camp. So Dachau is the first concentration camp. Kelmno is the first extermination camp and it's located in Poland. The camp was set up to specifically carry out ethnic cleansing through mass killings. So its only purpose was not for slaver, but for uh, mass killings. So 152,000 to 340,000 reported killings at this camp alone. Um, last year, you know, when I was showing this to my class, we talked about why do you think there's such a variety of numbers? Like, why isn't there an exact number? Well, it was hard to keep, keep track. They were just, 
basically remember they viewed Jewish people as rats and they were just killing them and killing them and killing them and it's hard to have an exact number of documentation. Some camps kept better documentation than others, but Kelmno had three gas vans that they used. Okay, another camp is Buchenwald. It was one of the first and largest of the concentration camps. So one of the first, but definitely the largest within Germany's 1937 borders. So remember Germany's borders are changing, right? Because in the background of this whole Holocaust, we have an entire world war going on, or you could look at it the other way. There's an entire world war going on and there's this whole Holocaust thing happening in the background, right? Um, prisoners from all over Europe and the Soviet Union were sent here, Jews, Poles, other Slavs, so Slavic people, we've talked about them uh, throughout the whole year, mentally ill, physically disabled, political prisoners were even sent there, Romani people or gypsies, Freemasons, criminals, homosexuals, and prisoners of war. Um, they worked primarily as forced labor in local factories. Um, so again, this is a concentration camp, so it's really forced labor, but of course killings um, and mass shootings or even just dying of disease and overwork happened, right? There were 240,000 prisoners and at least 10,000 of those prisoners were shipped to extermination camps and at least 43,000 died at that camp specifically. Okay, the next camp is called Bergen Belsen. Um, it was originally established as a prisoner of war camp in 1943. And that's a common thing that you're gonna see with a lot of these um, concentration camps is that originally the Nazis were saying, oh, it's just gonna be a prisoner of war camp. But then they changed their intention with the final solution because they thought the ghettos were gonna be good enough. But when they realized that the ghettos weren't really working out, they changed those prisoners of war camps into these concentration camps. Okay, Initially, this was an exchange camp where Jewish hostages um, were held with the intention of exchanging them for German prisoners of war held overseas. Um, the camp was later expanded to accommodate Jews from other concentration camps. Like I said, they moved around a lot, right? There are about 50,000 deaths in this camp alone, and a notable inmate that was at this camp was Anne Frank. So you've heard the story of Anne Frank. I think some of you um, read the diary of Anne Frank in middle school, I believe, um, but everybody knows the story of Anne Frank. So she was obviously hiding in the attic when she was found this was the camp that she was sent to. A lot of people think that she went to Auschwitz just because she's one of the most fam famous characters in the Holocaust and Auschwitz was the biggest camp, but no, she was actually sent to Bergen Belsen and she did not die in a gas chamber, which a lot of people think that she did. Um, she actually just died of disease at this camp. Okay, so Auschwitz, this is the camp that everybody knows, right? Located in German-occupied Poland. So it's technically Poland, but Nazi Germany obviously owns a lot of um, Europe at this time, right? Auschwitz consisted of three camps, including a killing center. So it was a hybrid combination of a concentration camp where they had forced labor and they had a killing center. So it was also considered an extermination camp. These camps were opened over the course of nearly two years, from 1940 to 1942. Auschwitz closed in January of 1945 with the liberation of the Soviet Union. So it's in Poland, which is closer to the east. So when the Soviet Union moved in on Germany from the east, uh, Battle of Berlin, when that all happened, Soviet Union liberated Auschwitz. So more than 1.1 million people died at Auschwitz alone, okay? You saw in the other camps we talked about, 43,000 de deaths, 10,000 deaths. Auschwitz alone had 1.1 million deaths, whether it be in the labor camps of disease, um, of starvation, whether it be mass shootings, or whether it be at that killing center, that extermination part of the camp that they had with the gas chambers. Those who were not sent directly to the gas chambers were sentenced to forced labor. So like I said, if you were too weak or overpopulation, then they would send you to the killing center. And the killing center in Auschwitz was called Birkenau. That's where the gas chambers were located. So imagine that there are a bunch of different camps within Auschwitz. Um, some of them are labor centers and then Birkenau was the killing center. Okay, so um, this is the last slide. This is the map that I wanted to show you. So we have Germany, we have Poland uh, to the east, you know, we have France to the west. Um, and you can see the green squares, those are the concentration camps. 
So those are the forced labor camps, definitely a lot of deaths and killing there, but they did not have gas chambers. The red boxes, those are the death camps or the extermination camps. These are the camps that had gas chambers, okay? So let me see if I could get my pen and we can locate a couple. I'll use blue. So we have Kelmno we talked about. We have Auschwitz with Birkenau, that killing center that we talked about. A couple other concentration camps. We have Dachau, we have Buchenwald, and we have Bergen Belsen, um, where Anne Frank was. Um, a bunch of other ones that they have that we didn't talk about. We talked about these specific ones either because they were the first extermination or the first concentration camp. They had the most deaths, things like that. Um, as you can see, most of the death camps are in the east and most of the concentration camps are in the west, mainly because um, geographically more Jewish people were living in Poland and Russia in that area. All right, so that's all that I have for you guys today. Make sure you complete uh, your guided notes. Our next assignment, you're going to look at some survivor stories. So I hope you found this interesting. Good job, guys.